Hey everyone, Maxwell here, and this is my one wheel pint with some sweet orange accents. And in this video, I'm going to share my experiences with the pint and who I think would best enjoy this awesome toy. So first off is that this thing is built to get some battle damage. I mean, just look at how scuffed up these railings are. You can see that after 300 miles, my pint has seen some adventures, and honestly, I would hope any one wheel would show similar scars as these things are just made to go outside and shred. The one wheel pint has eight and a half inch wide foot pads on each side of the go-kart wheel in the middle, and each foot pad has a super sturdy grip tape that keeps your feet from slipping. And for someone who's 6'2", they are big enough to where I never think I'm going to lose my balance. But I would definitely appreciate the larger foot pads on the pint's bigger brother, the GT, a bit more. The power button is sealed under this rubber top with the logo, which I think looks super cool. And the only other input is the power plug in the back. Once you plug in the pint to charge, which I'll get to battery and range in a bit, the one wheel's top display light turns on to show the charge status of the battery, which is a nice touch. I always appreciate when companies think about little things like this to make life a bit easier. The pint comes with a mag handle that snaps into place when you're not holding it, but I ended up buying the standard handle in orange to accent the swappable bumpers I got in orange as well. I think this combo looks pretty nice. But if you don't like my color selection, you can customize quite a bit from fenders, stands, mag handles or mag handle pros, rail guards, bumpers, foot pads, and even a little plug for the charge input. It's always cool to see other one wheelers riding around with their custom colors setups. It's definitely a reflection of personal style, which I think is way cool and something that just makes your one wheel special. But the one drawback to all these options is that they all cost extra. The pint doesn't include a fender, which I recommend you get, or any other color options. You may end up spending hundreds more than just the sticker price to customize your one wheel pint. And since you've made it this far, tell me how you'd customize your one wheel in the comments below. And if you appreciate the video, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It would really help out my channel. The one wheel has an array of LEDs for the front and back of the board. They do light up pretty well, but don't offer much throw to illuminate that far ahead of you. Now, I don't actually think they were meant to help you see necessarily. I think instead they are designed to keep you safe by making sure everyone else can see you at night. Okay, so that's the build quality of the one wheel pint. Let's move on to how this thing performs and who it may be for. The one wheel has a gyroscope that keeps the board balanced when you step up and engage it. When you do engage the board, you instantly feel a light jolt as it balances itself and starts reading your movements. And this is when the fun begins. Once you are on the board, you either lean forward to move forward or lean back to slow down. And from there, you start to ride around by leaning on your toes or your heels like any other board sport. The best way I can describe riding a one wheel is like snowboarding on asphalt. It sounds a little scary, but as long as you respect the board, you'll be fine. And by respect the board, I mean don't fight the pushback that the board gives you when you're going too fast. You see, the board will actually push against you while you're leaning forward if you're going too fast. This is actually a safety feature of the board, which I am grateful for, given how easy it is to fall off this thing. So respect the pushback. The electric motor is responsive and zippy, which adds to how much fun the pine is to ride around. You can slow down super quickly and turn on a dime if you need to just by leaning back and turning tightly on your heel or toe. It can be taken on grass, dirt, or really wherever you feel like adventuring, though because you are balancing yourself on one wheel, the board may slip out from under you on wet grass, mud, or smooth dirt. When compared to the other one wheels, the pint doesn't quite go as far with only 6 to 8 miles of range, compared to the Pint X and GT getting 12 to 18 or 20 to 32 miles of range respectively. This means that you can absolutely use your pint to get around town, go on shorter adventures, or even use it to get to work. But with such limited range, I've had to pay extra attention to where I was going and whether or not I'd need a charger. I have had the pint run out of juice once, and while I was only a quarter mile away from home, you do not want to be caught with this 23 pound board running out of juice. It's heavy enough to where it's just uncomfortable to hold for longer than a minute or two. 
So plan your trips carefully and keep a charger with you if you are unsure. A positive note about the weight, however, is that I don't imagine anyone stealing a one wheel very easily. They are heavy and have a bit of a learning curve, so the chances of someone jumping on one and riding away or just lifting it up and booking it down the street is low. It's like the design of the one wheel is a kind of a security feature, really. And with that, everyone, thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video, everyone.